fish report. Hanging out the fish report. Hanging out the fish report. Hanging out the fish report. For your latest news in high school sports, tune in to the fish report. Don't need no bed, don't need no pull. When you tune in to the fish report, hanging at the fish report, hanging at the fish report. You got Craig and TK and had that deep tune in at the fish report. Coming to you live from Studio F in Rushi, Ohio. It's the Fish Report Live Show with your hosts Craig Fissinger and Ken Francis. Welcome back to Season 4 of Fish Report Live, everyone. We're back again, folks. My name is Craig Fissinger. That's Ken Francis. Back in the sound room, you guessed it, TK and Heavy D are back for another season. And what do you think, partner? Are you ready to do this thing again? Absolutely, Craig. You know, it's hard to believe this is our fourth year, but uh, you know, anytime you can show up in shorts and flip-flops and go to a good day's work, it's a lot of fun. All right, well, we've got a lot of sports to talk about this year and some big interviews coming up tonight. What do we got on uh, on schedule for tonight? Well, Craig, we're looking forward to talking to the Rushi girls golf team. Uh, we're going to talk uh, to a junior and a couple seniors over there as well as our head coach, Doug Borchers. Uh, we're going to talk some cross-country, Craig, and we're going to talk with the uh, – Fastest runner in this area, Sarah Kenny from Coolwater, as well as we're going to head up uh, another MAC team, and we're going to talk some uh, high school football in Minster star Eli Wolf. All right, well, before we do all that, just like we do every year, we like to do a weekly trivia question where you ask me a trivia question. I look for a little help from our viewers out there and try to answer that question at the end of the show. What do you got for me tonight? Well, Craig, uh, since we're talking some MAC football tonight, uh, uh, Marion Local and Coolwater, they've dominated the MAC for the last several years. So who is the last team besides Marion Local or Coldwater to win a MAC football title? And my choices are? Your choices are Minster, Delphi St. John's, Versailles, or St. Henry. Okay, well, you told me that question a little bit ahead of time, and I have no idea, so I'm going to need some help from the viewers. Uh, for the viewers out there that are watching this on the Fish Report Live page or their computer, you'll see the trivia question on that page. I'm also going to be sending that out on Twitter in just a little bit, so hopefully we'll get a little help, and I'll try to answer that at the end of the show, okay? Right, that's a lot of football power right there, Craig. And uh, But, yeah, hard to believe Marion Local and Coldwater have won as many as what they have in a row. All right, well, I'll give it a shot, and let's get things started talking a little girls golf. We're going to be talking some boys golf in the weeks to come. Tonight we're going to start out with girls golf ken and the season just got underway back at the beginning of august uh, they've been playing for about a month now i want to ask you who are some of the uh, some of the girls you see playing well right now in this first month of the season well craig you're going to talk good golfers in this area you have to start off with fort Lamy redskins sophomore emily knopf okay she's been fantastic this season she had a great summer uh she holds the uh, nine hole low score right now of 32 and also the 18 hole low score craig of a uh, blistering 70 she saw, shot just the other day uh add to with her uh of the former army redskins Kristen barhorst uh, she's been a good teammate of emily's and uh, some rushi golfers have the raiders playing very well alicia george the junior as well as seniors karina francis and kara barlogi uh, they're both playing very well all right, well, speaking of those uh, Raiders, we had a chance to talk to them out at the uh, Stillwater Valley Golf Course last night. Let's check out the video and, and see what they had to say. Fish Report live here at Stillwater Valley Golf Club in Versailles with Rushi Raiders head girls golf coach Doug Borchers. And, Coach, team's off to a nice start this year. You're 4-0 right now. Uh, you graduated a couple uh, good golfers last year, a couple four-year starters in Morgan Doherty and, and, and Taylor Borchers. Uh, are you surprised you're off to such a good start this year? Uh, in a way, yes. You know, we got three returning lettermen. Um, and I knew they were going to be good players. Uh, three girls off the JV team didn't quite know what to expect. They worked uh, worked all summer on their games, and they've caught up to the, to the returning lettermen. So we're pretty balanced right now with six girls about the same averages. I know you're the kind of coach that likes to set goals. Uh, can you share any of your team goals uh, this year with us? Well, the girls set their own goals. I asked them at the beginning of the season. I told I told them, I said, I, you you got to tell me what you want to accomplish. Um, the girls came up with their goals. The first thing they want to do was finish in the top three in an invitational, and they've done that. They wanted to beat Fort Laramie. Uh, we've got that match coming up this Thursday, although um, we've, uh, we've, we've beat them in invitation already. And then they also wanted to uh, set a school record. Haven't done that yet, gotten close. Uh, last match we were seven strokes away from the school record, so they're honing in on that one also. All right, speaking of that matchup, Thursday with Fort Laramie, got one of the best players in the area and that sophomore, Emily Knopf. Uh, what do you have to do to prepare well for her and the rest of the team? I don't think you can prepare for Emily. Uh, she's a phenomenal player, and she'll play some big-time golf someday. Um, 
we need we need balance out of our team. We need to focus on what we're doing. We need to keep our putts low. And uh, as a team, I think we can beat them. We're not going to beat Emily. Uh, we're just going to try to kind of just stay with her. Lindsay, tell me a little bit about your golf game. Right now, what is the best part about your golf game and what needs the most work? The best would probably be putting and chipping because that's all I've been doing consistently. Yesterday, my driver was bad. Today, my irons are bad. So just trying to be consistent pretty much. Kelsey, what do you enjoy the most about playing the game of golf? Um, well, golf's a really fun sport to play, but the funnest thing for me is the social aspect of the game, like getting to talk to all the girls. It's a lot of fun. Alicia, it's Thursday night. You play the Fort Laramie Redskins, and uh, you'll be paired up with the talented sophomore Emily Knopf. Tell us how you look forward to that matchup. Um, Emily Knopf is a great player, and I just can't wait to get some good tips from her. Karina, Coach Borchers is not here with us right now, so tell me, who's got the better game, you or Coach Borchers? We're pretty similar players, but it kind of depends on the day. On days that end in Y, I think I probably have the upper hand. All right, Ken, uh, looking forward to that big matchup on Thursday with Fort Laramie. Anytime you get Rushi and Fort Laramie together, it, uh, any kind of sport, it's always a good rivalry. Uh, but, hey, we forgot to mention some MAC golfers there uh, before that video, and, and, of course, there's some good golfers in the MAC, isn't there? Yes, there is, Craig. Uh, we'll start with Versailles. Uh, they got a very good girls' golf team again this year, Craig, uh, led by Madison Kovalt and Hannah Niekamp, as well as the Minster team, Craig, uh, uh, Ali Fisher, the freshman uh, over there at Minster, also off to a nice start uh, on the links this year. All right, and uh, let's uh, let's change subjects now. We're going to stick with some girls' sports, but talk a little girls' cross country. And, of course, this area traditionally is always very good in cross country, whether you're talking the SCAL or the MAC or even CCC. But uh, who are some of the individuals and some of the teams that you're looking forward to, to seeing this season? Well, Craig, as you know, uh, cross country uh, for me and you is probably our number one sport that we enjoy or maybe Absolutely. know the most about. We enjoy talking about all the sports, but uh, we probably know the most about this when we've been following it for so many years. But uh, when you talk girls' cross country Craig you have to start uh, team wise off with Rushi and Minster uh, very loaded again this year those two teams have been uh, the last several years uh, at the state meet in Hebron and this year should be no different uh, the two got together the first week of the year again at Milton Union and uh, Minster got uh, edged Rushi there but only uh, by about eight points or so so it's very close the two teams are going to square off again uh, this weekend at Tiffin but uh, Rushi had a couple real nice uh, wins last week at the Greenville race. Uh, they beat number two state-ranked Coldwater, and they also beat uh, Division II powers Oakwood and Alter. So the Raiders are off to a nice start. All right, and then as far as individual runners, who are some of the individuals you're, you're watching? Well, Craig, uh, for Rushi, you have to start off with Emily Borchers, but uh, you can't leave out the supporting cast that she's gotten this year. Um, the juniors, uh, Molly Kearns has really stepped up her running this year. Uh, Lauren Heaton has been consistent as she has been since uh, she first stepped on the course her freshman year. Uh, freshman Megan Frazier is off to a great start, and sophomore Shea Gubo has been running very well. So that, those, uh, Emily, as well as that four-pack there, Craig, uh, that makes for a, a very solid five uh, girls running together in uh, any meet. Uh, and then can't uh, let out Chloe Floor from Bakken's. She's won a couple races already this year. And Minster's uh, leading runner has been Julia Slonkowski, off to a very strong start. All right, and I'm glad you saved one for me. And, of course, that is uh, one of the fastest girls, uh, the fastest girl in this area for sure, and one of the fastest girls probably in the state, and that is Sarah Kenny up there at Coldwater. Had the pleasure of watching her in the last four years. Uh, she's she's done some phenomenal things in her career. Did something uh, pretty extra special on this past Saturday in Greenville, won that race over there for the sixth year in a row. That's a really big meet. Had a chance to catch up with her at the meet and, and watch her run. So uh, why don't we check out the video of her running and our interview with her. Good job, 
All right, Sarah, you won this race six years in a row now, going all the way back to junior high. Congratulations on that. Yep. Your freshman and sophomore year, uh, you, you ran the small school division. You won that. Last year, you went up to D1. You won that. This year, D2, you won that. Well, you're a senior now. What are you going to miss about this, this Greenville race? Um, definitely just the, the course. It's a neat course. You, you get to run over a bridge. It doesn't repeat much. The music's playing. It's just like a fun meet where I think everyone enjoys it, and our team really enjoys it. All right, you got a huge meet next week back at Tiffin. Last year you won that race in D2. What are you looking forward to in Tiffin this year? Um, definitely, you know, come out, try to win again. You know, it's for your team. They're, we're all trying to win the race, so hopefully we can get as many front spots as we can and have a decent time there. Still working on that. So. All right, and not too much, too much longer you're going to be uh, uh, talking about college, going to college. A any running plans in college? Can you tell us what you're going to be, where you're going to be going? Yeah, um, actually I'm taking three official visits this cross-country season. I may take one more um, right after season, and then I'll probably decide within that next week. So I'm going down to a couple schools in North Carolina. Um, I'm going to visit where my sister runs Ohio State, and then I might take one to Florida, but I'm not sure about Florida yet. I'm going to see how I like the other schools. So. All right, Ken, and that was Coldwater senior Sarah Kenny. You know, that Tiffin meet, uh, from what I'm told, one of the biggest in the country, is the biggest in the country, 356 teams, like 8,000 runners. Of course, there's a lot of different races, but a lot of fun, certainly extra special to win a race like that. And, and as we said before that video, Sarah's been uh, uh, a lot of fun to watch these last four years, four, four to six years, hasn't she? She has, Craig. Uh, she's had a great career at Coldwater. Uh, she's a three-time state champion. Uh, she excels in three sports, cross-country, basketball, track, uh, she also excels in academics in the classroom. So, you know, it's nice to see her, her off to a great start her senior season. Uh, wish her the best of luck as she finishes her career at Coldwater and, uh, you know, deals with the pressures of making that uh, tough college choice and best of luck to her. All right. Well, listen, that's going to do it for our first half of the show. We're going to take a short break, but uh, stay right there because when we come back, we're going to be talking some boys sports, including football and including that big interview with Minster superstar Eli Wolf. We'll be back in a few seconds.
All right, welcome back to the second half of Fish Report Live, our first show of Season 4. And, Ken, we haven't had a chance to talk to the guys back in the sound room yet, so I would like to go back there. Guys, just want to say welcome back. Thanks for coming back for another season. And I'm assuming you came back for the money. Is that right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's all about the cash. Show me the cash. Show me the package. Maybe it's actually about the cashews. Yeah. <laughs> Working for peanuts back there, is that right? I think the room got smaller, too. <laughs> oh, boy. Maybe a little higher. Glad you guys ate too many cashews, wanted to. Yeah. All right, well, we're going to come back to them in just a little bit, Ken. Let's uh, move ahead here and talk some football. And, uh, you know, week one is in the books now. I know you had a chance last Friday to head over to uh, Lehman, check out their new turf over there, and also uh, watch them host the Anna Rockets. What would you think about the new field? And, and more importantly, what did you think about the game? Well, 30 and 0 field, Craig, over there in Sydney, they've done a fantastic job. Beautiful turf, uh, you know, great grandstands on both sides, uh, locker rooms, end zones. Uh, it's just a beautiful complex. I look forward to uh, Sydney having some big time playoff games over there, Craig. Uh, I think they've got, uh, well, they obviously got the, the turf now. They've got the room to handle a large crowd, and uh, they got a lot of parking over there. So, uh, Sydney did it upright, and, uh, you know, as far as the game goes, uh, Anna was just way too much for Lehman to handle. Uh, you could tell from the opening kickoff that uh, Lehman was going to have their hands full, and they sure did. Uh, Anna's just bigger, stronger, faster, and uh, it was no contest, Craig. And, and, uh, but uh, Anna's going to be fun to watch in the MAC. You know, they got a lot of weapons. they got a great running back in Christian Williams. They've got a huge offensive line, a big defensive line. Uh, they got a crafty quarterback and Ryan Counts. So uh, they'll be fun to watch. Uh, Lehman, on the other hand, you know, once they get into their league, Craig, and they start doing battle with uh, the teams in their division, I think they'll be successful as well. All right, well, Lehman's going to end up playing Minster this Friday, and from what I saw on Friday night, the minster Larmy game, looks like Lehman's going to have their hands full again. Did get a chance to watch that minster Larmy game, kind of the same type of game, blowout, 34 to nothing, uh, you know, I know Larmy lost a lot from last year, but Minster looked awfully good for week one. Actually got some video highlights from that game, and uh, guys, you want to roll those? All right, and that was a couple of the first half highlights there. Of course, one of their big weapons on Friday night was Eli Wolf. Uh, he's the senior heading to Division I Eastern Michigan after uh, graduation in the spring. Kenny had seven catches for 127 yards that night. Could have had more if they didn't take him out in the second half there, but uh, he's quite a player, isn't he? Yes, he is, Craig. You know, he's got great hands. He's got good size. He's got good speed. Uh, he does very well in track as well, Craig. So, you know, you can, you can, you can see him run there. And uh, it was, uh, you know – He's got a lot of talent there, Craig. Obviously, he's got an older brother at the uh, University of Tennessee doing quite well. So uh, it's nice to have Eli on the phone with us with us tonight. Uh, I, Eli, you out there? Yeah, I'm here. Hey, listen, we just watched a few of your video highlights from your game at Fort Laramie on Friday. I thought Minster looked awfully sharp for week one. I want to ask you, what were, th- were your thoughts on how your team played? Uh, we've been working hard for uh, nine months in the off season. I think it showed that first game. Uh, we came out, we're physical, and uh, ended up on top. And I'm I'm really proud. All right. Well, listen, you're you're listed as a tight end, Eli. But I saw there were many occasions uh, on Friday night where you lined up as a wide receiver. Uh, you have a lot of speed. We've seen that in football. We've seen that in track. Do you see Coach Stokes using you in different positions uh, just because you're a playmaker? Um. Coach Stokes decided early on, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm more of a threat out of my perimeter. So I think most of the year you're going to see me line up out there and uh, maybe here and there we'll throw in some I mean, funky stuff or maybe I'll line up as a wing or something like that. But for the majority, I'll be out on the perimeter. Eli, hi, this is Ken. Uh, last year the Wildcats went 6-4 and four in arguably the toughest conference in Ohio. You guys just missed the playoffs. What's it going to take this year for the Wildcats to, uh, to make the playoffs? Those uh, two non-conference games, those first two, were uh, losses for us last year, and we really uh, needed to get those wins and those points. Uh, we got the best of Army this year, and now we play Lehman. That's going to be a huge win for us to get those points. 
but uh, also Marion, Coldwater, and Anna. Those are uh, three of the better teams in the MAC right now. And to be the best, you got to beat the best. So we really need to compete with them. Well, you you, you know you hit it there because uh, you know when Laura, if you can knock off. Uh, Lormy and Lehman and get two two wins there over uh, two teams in the same conference. Uh, you know they're going to probably accumulate a lot of victories uh, in their league for you. So, like you said, that amounts to a lot of uh, good points for uh, for you guys in the playoff pool. You announced sure. uh, back in July that uh, you're going to continue your football career in Eastern Michigan. Uh, there's another conference uh, buddy, uh, Brody Hoyne from Coldwater, also going to Eastern Michigan. You guys uh, buddies off the field, too? And uh, was this a package deal for uh, you guys going to Eastern Michigan together? Uh, I, I can't say we talked too much uh, before the whole Eastern Michigan deal, but after we realized that, yeah, we're getting pretty serious about this, we started talking more. And actually, we decided that both, I mean, we really liked it and kind of told each other, yeah, I'm thinking, thinking about committing here. And that same weekend, we both committed, and we were both pretty excited. It's nice to go in knowing somebody and that's from that familiar area. Well, we had Brody on our show last year, and a uh, great kid, great football player, and I'm sure you guys will uh, team up well together over there in eastern Michigan. Speaking of college football, uh, I'm assuming you had a chance to watch your brother, Ethan, play in front of 102,000 screaming crazy fans in Tennessee uh, last weekend. Uh, what did uh, the Wolf family do for the game? Did you make a trip down to Tennessee, or did you watch it at home? Yeah, we made the trip down. A uh, couple family friends and us uh, tailgated beforehand, and I mean, did that whole deal. But it, it was a great experience for us to get down there. Very humbling. Let me let me ask you: How many times did you sing Rocky Top? No, <laughs> oh, it was a bunch. I was, I was pretty jacked up during the game. <laughs> Hey, listen, last question, Eli. And uh, Speaking of Ethan, we have a clip of an interview he did a little earlier this before the season started for, a, I guess it was a Tennessee channel. And, uh, uh, guys, you want to roll that clip? Perfect. Your last question is actually submitted by a familiar face to you. At Eli Wolf 16 wants to know, why is your brother so much cooler than you? I don't know if I can answer that question. <laughs> he, uh, I, I, I don't know really why he said that, but that's, that's pretty funny, <laughs> Eli. So. Is he cooler than you? I, I don't think so. You're the cooler brother. <laughs> yeah. All right, now, Eli, I, you you got to be expected some payback uh, next year when you get up to Eastern Michigan. Is, are you expecting a little payback from your brother? <laughs> yeah, we, we always joke around and have a good time, so I'm, I'm sure he'll find some way to get back at me. Well, I know you're rooting for each other, but you're still brothers, so I, I, I'm yeah. <laughs> about betting you there's going to be some payback next season. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, listen, great stuff, Eli. I want to say uh, best of luck this Friday against Lame. And, uh, good luck the rest of the season, and, and thanks for joining us on the show tonight. Hey, thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Eli. Yep, see you. Yep. All right, that was the Minster senior superstar, Eli Wolf Ken. And uh, remember a couple years ago we went over to Minster and, and interviewed his brother, Ethan. You were throwing him some uh, some touchdown passes yeah. there in the end zone, weren't you? Yes, I did, Craig. Uh, you know, if I remember, I, uh, I hit him uh, right between the numbers on about a 20-yard touchdown pass right in the end zone. So he, he told me it was a well-thrown ball. I wonder if he, uh, he, he remembers the, that moment like when he's catching him for Tennessee there, you think? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> He, I would say Fish Report probably rank up there a little bit, a little bit above that volunteer catch in front of 102,000 fans. All right. We'll, we'll end it at that. Yeah. Then. All right. Let's, uh, I want to go back to the sound room again. And, and there was a Fish Report first last night. Ken actually called our first volleyball game on our own. TK did the play-by-play on that, had a little help. But uh, TK, I want to ask you how it went last night and what did you think of the, uh, the Raiders and the Redskins? I, I think it went well. I didn't get any uh, feedback on Twitter either way, so I'm not sure what that means. But uh, had a good time. Kim was great up there, uh, throwing in a lot of volleyball knowledge from her uh, years of coaching, and that helped me look even a little bit better or sound better. I guess we weren't on video, just a little audio up there. But we had a good time, and uh, I think we'll have to try that again. I think we got a game coming up this Saturday. Kim's going to jump in and uh, with Kim again, and then we'll see how that rolls. It was a lot of fun. Yep. All right, and Heavy D, I know you've been going to a lot of games. That's because you got a daughter out there on the court. Uh, what do you think about the rest of the SCAL this season? Uh, how, how is it? It's uh, it's going to be a dogfight, uh, Craig and Ken. Um, you know, Anna, uh, Rushi went to Anna uh, last week and uh, beat them in five, in uh, five close games. Uh, Larmy came to Rushi last night in uh, three very close games. Uh, got some word that Fairlawn, uh, second year back with Coach Wade Wilhelm, uh, very fundamentally sound and uh, uh, pretty strong with the um, defensive uh, passing 
and Jackson. You can never coach, uh, count Coach Metz's team out. Uh, they will, sh- will surely contest for the title. So um, you know you've got a you got a five way race um, for uh, the first couple spots in the county this year. Should be a should be fun to watch. Not too many nights off then for the uh, for the teams in the SCAL, nope. is there? Nope. All right, good stuff, guys. And uh, Ken, so you're calling the game on Saturday. Yes, I am. Do, do you know enough about volleyball to call a volleyball game? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I've learned a lot from uh, TK and Heavy D back here in the sound room, getting some tips from them guys. And, uh, yeah, you'll be, uh, you'll be impressed. All right. Well, I, I'm actually going to be in Spencerville when that game's going on. So uh, I'm going to be tuning in on my mobile device and, and, mm-hmm. and uh, checking you out. Yeah, I'll have a, I'll have a partner, uh, Kim Puppelman. She knows a little bit about volleyball. So uh, if I struggle a little bit, I can uh, turn the mic over to Kim. All right. We'll be listening for you. All right, one more thing to get to, Ken, before we close it down tonight, and that is that trivia question you asked me at the beginning of the night. Why don't you tell me what it is again, and we're going to check out the uh, Fish Report telemetrics and see what the viewers thought. Uh, Trivia question for tonight, Craig, was who was the last team other than Marion Local or Coldwater to win a MAC football title? Was it Minster, Delphi St. John's, Versailles, or St. Henry? All right. Well, I, I just have the feeling Minster and St. Henry, before Coldwater Marion thing, I, I, I thought the, those, those schools were down a little bit, so that narrowed it down to Delphus and uh, um, Versailles for me. I have a tendency to lean towards Versailles, but I need a little help. Guys, what do you got back there on the telemetrics? What, what are we looking at? Well, and what does that mean the, exactly? On the telemetrics tonight, a big whopping 58.8% of the votes are leaning towards Delphus. Uh, we got another 29% at uh, Versailles, and uh, the rest fall with St. Henry and Minster. So the fans say Delphus, St. John, the uh, Blue Jays, right? Yep. Well, you know what? I'm going to go against the fans. I'm going to go against the fans, Ken. I don't think they're right. I think it's Versailles. Uh, Versailles has been awfully tough for a lot of years. And before, again, the whole Marion local cold water uh, dominance. I, I think Versailles is a team, so I'm picking Versailles. Craig, you're going to lose some fan base here. You oh, should have went man. with your fan coverage. You should have went with our audience right here. The Blue Jays of Delphi St. John's were the last team to win the MAC football title, uh, other than Marion Local and Coldwater. Last time I'll do that, I guess. I'll, I'll stick with the fans next time. We got a couple minutes, Craig. You care if I bring up one little topic? Go for it. Uh, Friday night when I was at the uh, Anna Lehman game, you know, I, I, I saw the new OHSA rule kick into effect, and I think you saw the same thing at uh, the Mercy Mister, Roll. Yeah, the Mercy Roll. Uh, second half, 30-point lead, clock keeps running. Can I ask your opinion on that? I actually uh, I kind of liked it. I, I thought, you know, when the game's out of hand like that and, and you know, I lose some interest, it was nice to, to, to get keep things moving. Although I did, did read a good article this week about how it, it, it takes away from the, the teaching opportunities there. So what, what's your thoughts on it? Uh, you hit the two big points, Craig, right there. The pros and the cons. Uh, obviously, it uh, makes the, the game go a lot faster. I was talking to a, a fellow layman friend, and, and before I knew it, this third quarter was over. It took like – 13 minutes you know yeah and uh but on the other hand uh you know you do eliminate a lot of coaching the youth players the the team that's getting uh you know when they put their second stringers in you you lose that time of coaching so uh i can't say i'm a big fan of it um i I think i would rather see them um you know come up with another way to to maybe uh soften the blow on the team that's getting beat but uh i don't know that that's the answer all right. Well, maybe that later this season, as we talk to some coaches, uh, more coaches or players on this show, we, we might even ask them about that. So I agree. All right. Well, that's going to wrap things up for us tonight. Uh, do want to say thanks to uh, the Rushi Golf Team, to Sarah Kenny from Coldwater and Eli Wolf from Minster for joining us on the show tonight. Ken and I and the crew, we're all going to be back again next week. Same time, same place with another big show. Until then, have a great rest of the week and good night, everyone. Don't need no pull when you tune in to the fish report.